Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the academic procession and the chancellor. Please be seated. Good afternoon and welcome. I am Dr. Susan Tai, and I have the privilege to serve as McMaster University Provost and Vice President Academic. This afternoon, I also have the great pleasure as serving as your Master of Ceremonies and welcoming all of you, graduates and guests, to this convocation ceremony. On behalf of the university, I would like to recognize and acknowledge that we meet here today on the traditional territories of the Mississauga and Haudenosaunee nations and within the lands protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. We must remember that we all have a role in upholding the spirit of this agreement, which urge for the peaceful sharing of Earth's resources. We must also not forget that merely acknowledging our presence on these lands is only a small step in our shared journey towards the path of reconciliation. I challenge you to consider how you can foster reconciliation among the many peoples that inhabit these lands. I would like to start today's proceedings by acknowledging some of the notable leaders joining me on stage today. Our Chancellor, Ms. Santi Smith, President and Vice Chancellor, Dr. David Farrar, Provost and Vice President Academic, University of Waterloo, Dr. James Rush, Vice Provost and Dean of Graduate Studies, Dr. Steve Ranilovic, Vice Provost International Affairs, Dr. Bonnie Ibua, Vice Provost Teaching and Learning, Dr. Kim Dye, Dean, Faculty of Science, Dr. Maureen McDonald. Associate Deans, McMaster University, and visiting faculty members and honored guests. 
Before we start our formal program, may I first ask that everyone in the hall please switch off any electronic devices that may ring or beep during the ceremony. I would now like to call upon our Chancellor, Ms. Santi Smith, to make her welcoming remarks and then deliver the Thanksgiving address. Nyawe, thank you, Provost Tai. Sego Sevaguego, greetings everyone. Honored guests, staff, family, friends, colleagues, McMaster, and University of Waterloo faculty members, and most importantly, graduates. What an exciting day to share and to celebrate accomplishments and to extend our gratitude. I'm pleased to share with you the Ohandu Galewa Degwe, the words spoken before all else, also called the Thanksgiving Address, spoken in Gaengeha, the Mohawk language. Se watoho sios ne gat ne galiwesa, ne ona, ne angaliho hetste, ne ganawala donsula. These words of wisdom aim to unite our minds and hearts in cultivating compassion and kindness to all living things, to acknowledge, to give thanks, and to affirm our interdependence, and to remind us of our responsibilities for sustaining nature's delicate balance, and to encourage peaceful coexistence in alignment with the immensity of creation. Daiti nuwalara ne ongwe sua, eto na yonto haget ne naguat nigula. We give greetings and gratitude to people, human beings, our ancestors, our family, and friends, so be it in our minds. We give thanks to Mother Earth, for she provides us with everything that we need to survive and thrive, so be it in our minds. We offer greetings and gratitude to the waters, from the oceans to the streams, to the waters flowing in our body, and to the water that quenches our thirst. Water is life, so be it in our minds. We give thanks to all of the fish life who help to purify the waters and provide us with sustenance, so be it in our minds. We offer greetings and gratitude to the plant life, from the grasses to the medicines which purify and strengthen our bodies, so be it in our minds. We give acknowledgement and thanks to the insect world who help to pollinate the plants and sustain life, so be it in our minds. We offer greetings and gratitude to our sustenance foods for nourishment and the medicine they provide us. So be it in our minds. Daiti nuwalaro ne wahyari yunta eto na yonto hage ne nguat nigula. We give greetings and gratitude to the fruit life who help to nourish our body. So be it in our minds. Daiti nuwalaro ne gunzirio eto na yonto hage ne nguat nigula. We offer greetings and gratitude to the animals, many who sacrifice their lives to help sustain us who are our teachers and guides, so be it in our minds. We give thanks to all of the birds whose beautiful singing help to uplift our spirit and bring peace and calm to our hearts, so be it in our minds. We give thanks to every species of tree. We cannot live without the oxygen they provide us. Their roots and sap provide us with nourishment and cleansing for our body. 
We are grateful for their shelter and shade, so be it in our minds. Daitina walara ne zuwer la warnier, eto na yonta hage ne naguat nigula. We offer greetings and our gratitude to the circulating winds who travel the earth bringing new life and breath. Through observing the winds, we acknowledge the cycling of seasons and the messages about the environment, so be it in our minds. We give thanks to Grandfather Thunderers for purifying the air and awakening the earth and awakening us. The powerful voice of thunder and lightning bring on the replenishing and renewing rains, so be it in our minds. Datsi dawanualaro ne anjangeni galakwa eto nayonta hage ne naguat niguna. We offer greetings and gratitude to our eldest brother son, who appears consistently each morning to provide us with sunshine, protection, and energy for all living things to thrive, so be it in our minds. Dayati nualaro ne asatanega wat nirele eto nayonta hage ne naguat niguna. We give thanks to Grandmother Moon for lighting up the nighttime sky and for her powerful pull on the waters, governing of cycles, women, and birth, so be it in our minds. Dayati nuwalaro ne yodzisto huar lunyo eto nayonta hage ne naguat nigula. We give greetings and thanks to the stars, to the cosmos, for providing us with direction, guidance, and dazzling our eyes as we look into the nighttime sky, so be it in our minds. We give thanks to our protectors, our spiritual guardians, who provide us with clarity of mind and bring peace and calm to our hearts, so be it in our minds. Datsi dawanu walaro ne gant sans stance le goa sa oyela et na yonto ge ne goa ni gula. We give thanks to creation, the immense creative energy that lives and moves in every entity and lives and moves in all of us. Da eto ni gawanege da eto. This humble acknowledgement is a reminder of the immensity of the creative living universe about, of which we are a very small part. It frames our responsibilities as protectors of nature and active upholders of skana, which means peace and balance. Peace and balance within ourselves and in relation to our kin, community, and environment. And we are grateful and thankful to be present here in this very moment in acknowledgement and celebration of all of your achievements and to recognize each graduate for the energy, dedication, and perseverance in your journey to complete your degree at McMaster University. It's an exciting time, a day, for all of you who are graduating and often just as exciting, more exciting, for the supporters that help you get here, many who supported you and played a key role in you being here today. Today we acknowledge the special care, support, and, and guidance from family, friends, colleagues, and the McMaster faculty and staff. Graduates, you have achieved a great deal to get to this moment. Celebrate, soak it all in, be reflective, and we all look forward to what future experiences you may bring to this world. Yo Yanale, congratulations to the class of 2023. Please enjoy the ceremony. Thank you, Chancellor Smith. I would now like to introduce the Dean of the Faculty of Science, Dr. Maureen McDonald, to make her own welcoming remarks and then present the honorary degree recipient. Good afternoon. 
we reached out to some of the students who are graduating today. We asked them to look back at their time at McMaster and share what they learned both in and outside of the classroom. The moments that really mattered. Who made a difference and what they will miss the most. While the students came from different programs, there was one common theme running through their answers. And that theme was community. Community is what the students valued the most. And it is community that they will miss the most as they, like you, start new chapters in their lives today. Your communities at McMaster University were made up of classmates and friends, professors, TAs, staff, coaches, and mentors. You learned in these communities that science, like life, is a team effort. Yes, you can go it alone, but you will go farther and have a way better time if you go together. So I want to leave you all with two final assignments that are all about community. You didn't think you'd have assignments today, did you? First, as you line up and get ready to walk across the stage, I want you to think of someone who has made a difference to you. And then I want you to personally thank them. Send a text message, post a shout out on social media, fire off an email, or even send a handwritten card. That's something your parents and grandparents used to send and it involves stamps and a mailbox. The stamp goes in the top right corner. Let that person know how they helped you out. There is a great quote from Maya Angelou that is worth repeating here. I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. This is your other assignment. It has a bit longer timeline and deadline. It's not enough for you to join communities. At some point in your career, I want you to build one. Be the catalyst who brings people together. And I want you to create a community that is as diverse and inclusive as those you were part of here in the Faculty of Science at McMaster University. Now, some of you have already built communities as undergraduate or graduate students. You have all made our faculty and university an even better place to learn and work. I cannot thank you enough. In many spaces, it is you that is driving the real change and we're sim simply trying to keep up with you. Create communities where everyone can be brave and courageous and free to be their true selves. Communities where, like you during your, your time with us, where people will do some pretty remarkable things. This happened for you here at McMaster. Please return the favor later in your career and wherever you end up calling home. Thank you for being part of our community in the Faculty of Science at McMaster. We are so very proud of you and we cannot wait to see what you'll do next as community builders, scientists, and McMaster alumni. Thank you. I would now like to present our honorary degree recipient, recipient Frederick Archibald Moyes. To the McMaster community, Frederick Moyes is likely best known as a longtime professor in the Department of Physical Education and now the Department of Kinesiology. His accomplishments and contributions, however, cannot be contained or defined by work in a single scholarly discipline. Professor Moyes was born in Scotland and in what was likely a rare move for a future university professor, dropped out of high school. He served in the Royal Air Force for three years before completing his high school studies and starting a teaching career at his alma mater, Breadalbane Academy in Alfredibly, Scotland. I should have pronounced that better for someone whose last name is MacDonald. <laughs> he was a lecturer at Ahmadu Bello University in Nigeria and then a research officer in the psychology department at Glasgow University. There he led the development of a testing process for motor impairment in children ages 5 to 16. The test of motor impairment was published by Harcourt Assessment and a modified version of the original test program is still in print today. He then served as a senior lecturer at Bedford College in England. 
Arriving at McMaster University in 1969, Professor Moyes was a fixture in the Department of Physical Education until his retirement in 1994. He earned MSU teaching awards in 1981 and 89 and achieved legendary status among phys ed students for his teaching and innovation in the mandatory anatomy 1A06 class. What began with a curriculum based on his meticulously crafted chalk drawings and engaging lessons became one of McMaster's first blended learning courses when he used a sabbatical to write and illustrate what he called a mini text, a course content plan divided into 26 weeks of material that would form the basis of teaching and testing anatomy using computers. An accomplished mus musician, Professor Moyes began playing ballroom and Cayley music in Scotland before playing piano in clubs and casinos in England and performing ballroom dance music and writing and performing satirical songs in Canada. He was a regular contributor to CBC radio shows including Metro Morning and Morningside and recorded and released a number of albums including Fred Moyes Sings Satire, the very irreverent Fred Moyes, What You Hear Is What You Get, Transatlantic Ties, and To Be a Wind. He even wrote, performed, and recorded a McMaster tribute song titled My Mac. I'm not sure it's available on Apple iTunes, but we'll see if we can get that up. Professor Moyes has taught and composed traditional Scottish music and published a number of his compositions in hornpipes, jigs, strass bays, and reels. He's also a former president of the Robert Burns Society of Hamilton and chairman of the 1988 Burns Federation International Conference. One of the most significant aspects of the legacy Professor Moyes has created involves his inexhaustible efforts to bring Scottish country dance to the world. He's performed in Scotland, of course, as well as Canada, the United States, Germany, England, Japan, and China. He's also the author and publisher of Scottish Country Dance Music, an examination of the role of music and musicians in Scottish country dancing. He's a winner of the Scots Magazine International Song Contest and the recipient of the Scroll of Honor from the Royal Scottish Country Dance Society. Chancellor Smith, I ask that you add to this list of accolades today by conferring upon Frederick Archibald Moyes the degree Doctor of Letters Honoris Causa. Frederick Moyes, by the authority of the McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to confer upon you the degree Doctor of Letters Honoris Causa in McMaster University with all the rights and privileges pertaining to that degree. I would now like to invite Dr. Moyes to deliver the convocation address. Chancellor Smith, President Farrar, Vice President Tai, McMaster University and University of Waterloo academic leaders, faculty members, honored guests, and graduates. I am hugely honored to be here today. I think it's hard for you to believe that <laughs> a little boy from Aberfeldy, <laughs> Aberfeldy, <laughs> would end up standing here with an honorary degree. Two threads have run through my life, sometimes following quite separate paths, at other times overlapping. For example, something that wasn't mentioned was the fact that I used to play every year at a wine and cheese party which the students threw and I was delighted to come along and provide some musical entertainment at that party. I had no intention of offering advice to the graduating students. 
I think unsolicited advice is uh, rarely appreciated and even less rarely followed. So I will hope that in what I have to say, some of the stories I have to tell about my life and I, how I came to be here will deliver something of a message to you that may help you in your future. One thing that did uh, recently come to memory was that I feared something greatly. When I arrived at the Scottish School of Physical Education as a student, I was in that first week invited to get into the swimming pool and swim across. I had been asked if I could swim and I hesitantly said yes. Well, I started swimming across the pool. By the time I got to the other side, I was on the tiles at the bottom. I was still doing the breaststroke beautifully, but I wasn't breathing at all. So when I came out, the same gentleman who'd asked me could I swim said, I think Moyes will assign you to the category of non-swimmer. And I was given to the Scottish butterfly champion to teach me to swim. And he did an excellent job. In three months, I could swim across the pool. In six months, I could swim the length of the pool. And in nine months, I earned my bronze life-saving medallion. A year later, I was awarded by the Royal Life Saving Society the Award of Merit, a silver medallion. But I was still a shallow water swimmer. I was afraid of deep water. It took some years for me to be out on a lake, the depth of which was unknown. It was a sailing class in the McMaster uh, Physical Education Department summer camp at Camp Oconto. Sailing on this particular sailboat, I looked over the side, the starboard, and I dived into the water. I swam under the keel, came up the other side, and I had conquered my fear of deep water. And I would invite you, if you fear anything, confront it and find a way to defeat it, and I'm sure you will. What was to become the foundation of my career began in a, a rather peculiar way. I was in the Air Force, as has been said, and they were paying me the vast sum of 28 shillings a week. And I discovered that playing the accordion in a local pub, I could earn 40 shillings a week in one night. So I was playing in the pub, and many singers among the populace who uh, frequented the pub sang. And fortunately, I had acquired a considerable repertoire of good songs, and they enjoyed this. One of those singers was a phys ed teacher called Gran Paddy, who was the head phys ed teacher in Monk's Dyke Secondary School. Now you may wonder, justifiably, how do I come to remember his name, the school he taught in? Well, when I tell you what he then did, he asked me, when you finish with the Air Force, what are you going to do? And I said, really, I have no idea. I might become a trainee manager for a cycle store. And he shook his head and said, no, no, you shouldn't do that. You should become a teacher. Teaching's quite a good life, you know. The pay is not bad, and the summer holidays are very good. And the janitors, the custodians call you sir. Well, to me, that meant a great deal, because I had just come through Two years of saying yes sir, no sir, to that stratum of Air Force society called the commissioned officers. They had pale blue smooth suits, pale blue shirts. I had a dingy colored shirt and a hairy suit. And I was the lowest of the low, an aircraftsman second class. They were beyond touch. I couldn't reach them at all. And of course, they all had the same name. 
They were all called Sir. So when I was told the custodian would call me Sir, it was really meaningful. So he then did something which surprised me greatly. On my behalf, he wrote to three colleges in England and asked if they would accept me as a student. And the three answers that came back were identical. If Mr. Moyes wishes to obtain the necessary educational qualifications, we will be happy to offer him a place. Well, of course, I didn't have the necessary educational qualifications, and I wrote home to my parents telling them of my disappointment. And it just so happened that my father was talking with the local headmaster from Bredalburn Academy, seat of the Campbell clan, which is why the McDonald's are perhaps hesitant about the pronunciation. <laughs> Bredalburn Academy headmaster said what was at that time the unthinkable. He's completed grade 11. Why doesn't he come back and complete grades 12 and 13? So I found myself then the oldest schoolboy in Scotland at age 20. I had been vetted by the local director of education in case I had acquired any bad habits like going to a pub. <laughs> and when I thought how much, how important the going to the pub had been in launching and planting the seed of what was to become my career. The perception I had of the officers being in a stratum of society which was way beyond me made me wonder why. What is it that they have that I do not have? What keeps me down here when they are way up there? And I decided it was education. They had been to university and I had not. So another seed was planted, and that was to try to make myself available to an education. I was back at school. I completed grades 12 and 13. I obtained the necessary entrance qualifications and was accepted by the Scottish School of Physical Education in Glasgow as a student, which is where my efforts to swim across the pool happened. I spent three years doing physical education and an extra year with the students from Glasgow University studying general education, general studies it was called. When that was finished, I obtained a position at Brudalban Academy and taught there for two years. But in the meantime, a second teacher a physical education had re-entered my life. He had been the phys ed teacher when I left school at the age of 40, 15. And of course, he had written me off as a potential failure. He came back to Aberfeldy for a vacation just as I finished year one at the Scottish school. I met him turning a corner and I was wearing my blazer with the crest of the Scottish school figuring prominently on the breast pocket. He took one look at the blazer and he said to me, where did you get that blazer? He probably thought I'd bought it in the Goodwill store, but I hadn't. I was wearing it legitimately and I was happy to tell him I'd just completed year one of the Scottish School. And he said then, I am just going to Africa to establish a college of physical education there. I'm going to need faculty once it's established. and You'll be finished, so we'll see. I may be in need of your services. Well, it took five years from then, but a letter eventually arrived from COCAST, the Council for Overseas, uh, Council for Overseas uh, Colleges of Education and uh, Technology. The college was about to become Ahmadu Bello University, 
And I was interviewed in London and was happy to be appointed. I found it quite interesting that one of the candidates whom I beat out for that position came from one of the three colleges who had rejected me just several years before. So there I was, off to Africa in 19, that was 1950, uh, goodness, my, my years uh, are somewhat confused, but I reached Africa and was immediately invited to teach the anatomy course because the, teach, the lecturer who had been doing anatomy had gone to Kenya unexpectedly. And the reason for asking me to do it was that I had gone to the Scottish School of Physical Education and so had he. However, I realized that it would not be easy to take on this particular task, but I'd been taught at the college by their director of studies never to say no to an opportunity, to grasp it, embrace it, and work hard to make it a success. And that's what I did. I found books on anatomy, I went to the library, I equipped myself with sufficient knowledge, and I had been trained to teach, so I taught anatomy. Over the next several years, I continued attending lectures, one in particular on embryology with Dr. Bull at Cambridge University was extremely beneficial. And some students have told me that the embryology lecture that I gave subsequently in my course at uh, McMaster was the most memorable of my lectures. That may be why. Perception is a remarkable thing. We sometimes perceive things not as they are, but as we think they are. One of the officers in the Air Force who came from Scotland, his name was Pilot Officer McDermott, he spoke with a very rich, plummy voice, like the CBC. He was a Scot, but he didn't sound like a Scot. He was aloof, detached, not uh, quite unreachable. Well, I have to say that he was one of the people who inspired me to move from what I regarded as the very low stratum of society in which I found myself then with my hairy suit and my dark shirt to this elevated level of society where I would have a smooth suit and a pale shirt and maybe a car instead of a bicycle. So it was some 14 years later, I had completed my defending my thesis at Leicester University and was about to leave for Canada. Walking down Sohi Hall Street, I saw a man approaching me and I thought I recognized him. As he got closer, I said, excuse me, is your name McDermott? And he said, yes, do I know you? And I answered, yes, I was on RAF Manby when you were there. Oh, yes, uh, he asked me my name, and when I said Moyes, he said, oh, yes, I remember your name. What are you doing now? And this was a glorious opportunity for me to say, I've just completed a higher degree at Leicester University, and I'm about to sail to Canada to take up a faculty position at McMaster University. And he said, my word, you have done well. And I said to him, what are you doing? And he said, I'm attending Lang, uh, he first said, I've completed my 12 years in the Air Force, and I'm attending Langside College to obtain the necessary educational qualifications to train to be a teacher. And I couldn't help thinking things have come 
full circle. In my musical life, things began in similar random fashion. I was watching a hockey game in 1976 between the Philadelphia Friars and the Toronto Maple Leafs, and it was brutal. I felt this was a, a tragedy that such a good game played on a unique surface, very fast and entertaining, should be abused in such a way. So I wrote a song which I, which I called Hockey Night in Canada, and it began, if you want to find fortune and fame, play Canada's national game. It's hockey on ice, and it's awfully nice to be wealthy and toothless and lame. <laughs> My thoughts were on Bobby Orr at that particular time. Well, I took this, I, I recorded the song on a little tape recorder, accompanying myself on the piano, and took it into the university. And the hockey coach, Bill Mahoney, said to me, this is too good just to be letting us hear it. Why don't you send it to the CBC? Well, I did that, and I got a call sitting in my office from the producer of the Metro Morning Show, who said, we'd like to use your song, and we'll pay you $50 for the privilege. And I was astonished. First of all, I had never been on the radio, not even in a talking show. I never sang in church. I didn't sound like the great tenors or Frank Sinatra. My voice didn't seem adequate. And yet, here I was singing on the radio and being paid $50. So I said, is it a problem that I'm a member of the union, musicians union in Hamilton? This is being broadcast from Toronto. And he said, I'll investigate that and let you know. He called me back in 20 minutes and said, your fee for the song will be $100. <laughs> we have a contract with the American Federation of Musicians, and this is what your payment will be. They then shocked me in asking me to write more songs. And eventually I wrote a song about the retiring from the Trudeau cabinet of a man called John Turner. That song was picked up and was broadcast on the six o'clock news. And there I was singing my song about John Turner on the six o'clock news. It was quite incredible. And the CBC went on to say, we would like you to sign a contract and write a song a week on the municipal affairs in Ontario, the provincial affairs in Ontario, and the federal affairs under the Trudeau, then Pierre Trudeau government. Well, as usual, I said yes and signed the contract and went on then to write and broadcast over, over 300 songs. Throughout my life then, I have, I think it's reasonable to say, successfully pursued a career in the teaching of anatomy and a career in music, which has taken me, as was said, to places like Japan and Hong Kong and in many other parts of the world. And in both subject areas, I was self-taught. I had no formal training in either. But at the age of 60, I taught myself to write music and discovered that note values really is the basis of that, and it's not rocket science. So I hope when you leave here, armed with your degree, you will bear in mind that you may have hidden talents which can take you many places and even augment your salary. I wish you all very well with your future endeavors. Thank you. Congratulations, Dr. Moyes.
I would now like to welcome Dr. David Farrar, President and Vice Chancellor, to the podium to present the graduates to our Chancellor for admission to their degrees. Will the graduates please stand? This is the best part of the ceremony. They turn the lights on when you stand and we can see you just before you receive your degrees. Madam Chancellor, on behalf of McMaster University Senate, I present to you these candidates and those in absentia in order that you may confer the appropriate degrees upon them and I bear witness that they are worthy and suitable. Graduates, by my authority and that of the McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to admit those before me today and those in absentia to their individual degrees at McMaster University with all the rights and privileges pertaining to those degrees. My sincere congratulations to you all. Please be seated. Graduates. I now ask you to join me on stage so the Chancellor and I may welcome you to the McMaster Community of Scholars. I would be delighted to shake your hand or bump fists or acknowledge your accomplishments without touching. Our Chancellor will acknowledge your accomplishments without touching. Congratulations. <laughs> Honored guests, so that each graduate's name may be heard, it would be appreciated if during the presentation of the graduates, you would hold your collective applause to the end of each degree category. Thank you. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Doctor of Philosophy. Chem Louise Chang. <laughs> Devin Goddard McCarthy. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Science. Erin Christina Webb. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, May I present to you the following graduates of the degree Honours Bachelor of Science. Mariam Selah Abdel Basset. Eliana Abu Mane. Ravaya Afan. 
Nadia Ahmed. Victoria Grace Aikins. Rose Ida. Huda Al Humuzi. Noor Al Humuzi. Amna Ali. Kinza Ali. Mohammed Ali. <laughs> Momina Ali. Zoe Ang. Rihanna Ashley Anglin. Mohammed Ans. Abana Arithas. Madeline Elizabeth Arnott. Simrat Ari. Amna Ashfaq. Alexandra Bachi. Joshua Beck. Mahi Baga. Ekim Kaur Bagri. Almila Noor Bahar. Dylan Bayejnut. Chanel Charmaine Bailey. Prabjot Bangar. Delan Bastian Pili. Yeah. <laughs> Fatima Hadje Bechia. Yeah. Janvi Bedi. Yeah. Pamida Bechnia. Yeah. Kaylin Ariel Benito. Dominique Gomez Benales. Anushka Bala. Noor Kaur Bandal. Bhavnit Kaur Bangu. Mankiram Kaur Mbatal. Hanua Bati. Rasik Priya Kaur Buye. Jenna Esther Rose Beanstock. <laughs> Alexander Bielitsa. <laughs> Marina Butros Salama. Samantha Brinkos. Cameron Marjorie Broad. Natalie Ann Conan Brown. Heidi Elizabeth Bruins. Fahad Rasul Bhatt. Cory Byrne. Francesco Cavalieri. Zeynep Ruzet Setin. Anita Chasindran. Emma Swetman Chow. Wajia Chima. Samantha Chen. Joshua Robert Myers Cherney. Simran Chima. Paul Singh Chowan. Jashan Chung. Mitali Chopra. 
Omar Chowdhury. Fisa Chowdhury. Julia Chung. Stephanie Leia Chung. Yasmin Marquis Costa. Ashley Cruz. Rogelio Alexis Cruz Gonzalez. Noah R. Cummins. Carolina Chaya. Yaman Das. Mercedes Rina da Costa. Monica Daly. Gosimran Dio. Madeline Deschemacher. Harman Veer Daliwal. Jasmine Gill Dauna. Sukhmani Kaur Dauno. Neha Danbatri. Rimzin Dillon. Simrit Dillon. Simran Dinza. Sayan Jivagaran. Thirtisti Dimaki. Adrian George Dinoyu. Yasmin Dolachai. Ariana Duarte. Isabel Duchesne. Alicia Ashney Dutt. Addison Vonikevich. Nadine Elashi. Abdallah Ahmed El Komi. Mathieu Esso. Eba Fahed. Madison Lee Farmer. Alejandra Clara Featherston Rajic. Miriam Ann Feta. Anna Maria Fuda. Megan Heather Gallagher. Georgia Galshehi. Sinelli Gamage. Lukshana Ganesh Anananda. <laughs> Mohammed Sabir Gangdani. Alicia Gowa. Tanya Guy. Alexia Tonya Gligorich. Yasaman Golandayamanyan. Inaki Antonio Gomez Alvarez. Amal Gondal. Alexandria Azul Gonzalez. Druvil Gore. Angelina Greval. Yasnit Kaur Greval. Arash Halani. Sama Firas Hamid. Dua Haab. Jamie Harris. Larissa Cornelia Hemon. 
Ashton Sinclair Hickey. Mika Hirano. Eva Homyar. Yonsio Hong. Rodrigo Hontoria. Sharon Shea. Melanie Huang. Ariba Imran. Isa Iniat. Christopher Gamal Iskanda. Grace Jackman. Nidal Jamal. Carolyn Lee Jarvi. Jigania uh, Jaya Chandran. Caitlin Anjali Jayendran. Sweta Jaya Kanthan. Rayan Gina. Sydney John Batiste. Mahima Bharatkuma Joshi. Shaivaz Ashad Kant. Brinda Karunananthan. Nalili Anushka Khalu. Amal Khan. Samia Khan. Zarafshan Khan. Sirosh uh, Kawaja. Sarah Kitching. Abesha Kuparan. Emily Min Hue Lam. Rachel Louise Katrina Latane. Adam Lee. Lydia Ka Man Young. Tony Lee. Navrup Kawa Lidar. Ashley Lin. Nehal Singh Lubana. Mary Luke. Sandy Lu. Clara Ma. Metab Mahal. Yasmin Madian. Ambrose Lok Hai Mak. Sara Malhotra. Manal Malik. Michael Vincent Mamalotti. Yasmin Mansour. Nusaiba Munsuri. Alisa Brianna Costa Maric. Catherine Elizabeth Majad Singh. Emma Marquis. Amanpreet Marwaha. Lauren Angel Mastrotto. Tandia Singh Mataru. Malika Martin. Kushal Mavadia. Eric Meyer. Yasmin Majari. 
Megan Mackenzie McCleary. Nahit Mekala. Victoria Merola. Abiraj Minas. Stephanie Mitsilios. Wenjun Mo. Azin Mohammadi. Aksa Moha. Arena Mojaveri. Hossein Motamed. Abdullah Mumtaz. Delukshan Murugesu. Praveen Nadesan. Alexa Nansa. Yusra Batul Nakvi. Hanua Naru. Saja Nawab. Karandia Naya. Matthew Armin Nazarian. Snezhna Lori Mapa Namenzo. Logan William Newton. Angela Huang Quang Ling Nguyen. Jonathan Nichillo. Julia Catherine Nero. Serena Nuri. Madison Norris. Maria, so Maria Reina Nogitz. Logan James O'Neill. Caitlin Maria Isabel O'Regan. Samantha Occhio Grosso. Claudia Agorek. Katerina Oivan. Yui Kaur Oak. Testimony Olawode. Yusuf Omran. Antoinette Augustine Ong. Celia Jane Orr. Poonam Pada. Alisa Nicole Palazzo. Joan Barbara Palperan. Shibi Parameswaran. Tisha Parikh. Anjali Patel. Aryan Patel. Ria Hitesh Patel. Tandi Patel. Kavya Paris. Justin Tien Pham. Vanessa Marie Petrant Petrant Antonio. Brianna Piritano. Haley Alexandra Poon. Tiam Purbaktiari. Berfin Ilginpur. Haley Faith Putman. Amy Chow. 
Victoria Quach. Ashvini Rabindranath. Thea Radut. Sarah Raffier. Sania Raheja. Benli Reitman. Mahin Raja. Anoj Rajendram. Kathiani Ramesh. Sufyan Ratter. Shamila Ravindran. Hafsa Raza. Pierce Razak. Ali Rizwan. <laughs> Hannah Marie Rush. <laughs> Muyad Saif. Oh, Sanjoli Saini. Zainab Oyendramola Salami. Saeed Mohammed Al Salman. Simran Sandal. Mehak Preet Kawa Sandu. Shane Christopher Antonio Santos. Jessica Rachel Schneider. Jaslyn Kawasekun. Pooja Sentil. Aymun Kader Shah. Omar Shahid. Mohammed Zoyan Sheikh. Hadika Sheikh. Mohammed Umar Sheikh. <laughs> Nimra Shakil. <laughs> Ankur Sharma. <laughs> Pooja Sharma. <laughs> Sadika Irfan Sheikh. <laughs> Karen Shen. Katrina Shen. Gassan Sherry. Armstrong Shi. Hia In Shin. Salia Shuab. Alexa Tanya Sibiga. Muntaka Siddiqui. Talal Taufik Siddiqui. Ravneet Sidhu. Lavanya Raj Sinha. Achaya Sivakaran. Harrison Shivendran. Sarah Siad. Kang Yu Matthew So. Gorlin Kawa Sodi. Jasmine Sodi. Isabel Son. Yelena Spalevich. Kashini Krisha 
Shriyan Alunathan, Avina uh, Sriharan, Mila Stankovic, Julia Christine Stereopoulos, Gustavo Barrera Diaz Straza, Cherish Cheris Sudan, Ritika Sudan, Madison Rose Sunset, Hamza Saeed, Oishi Miranaz Saeed, Camille Shimchik, Mira, Murad Tahir, Jeremy Andre Lee Tanabe, Mohammed Hamas Tariq, Al Zahra Tani, Bavina Thiruna Vukarasu, Devon Alexandra Thomas, Kobe Tin, Anne Seattle Cruz Tino, Gokirat Singh Tour, Duk Tran, Tui Tran. Kai La Jennifer Tsang. Abilash Udandam. Megan Udit. Sara Ukropina. Zoa Uliet. Madison Van Osh. Kishan Vasudevam, Nishara Vatha, Vathanaka Kumaran, Rea Vaishno Vemula, Isha Verma, Mandraj Vyak, Milena Vujicic. Mate Vulas, Sujani Su Vithiswaran, Juliana Daniel Wadi, Hunter Lily Wagner, Alicia Wong, Ling Xuan Wu. Victoria Wei Yu Yao. Matthew Yu. Diana Zamir. Yi Jie Zhang. Chelsea Zishi Zhou. Zaria Zia. Basil Paul Zmiewski. Zoe Kimberly Zuidema. <laughs> Madam Chancellor. May I present to you the following graduates of the degree Honours Bachelor of Science Kinesiology. Nadine Abu Saidi. Dariush Akbari Kalachaya. Mohammed Al Habub. Taylor Aldor. Arya Alizadeh. Mira Mohammed 
Alkohali. Kasidi Afua Apia Kubi. Calvin Armstrong. Arushi Arora. Dina Atia. Usama Badran. Golin Kawa Bagri. Gabrielle Lily Elizabeth Bakker. Sydney Baumgarten. Matthew Alexander Bassinet. Angeli Mega Bedi. Natalia Beck. Abhimanyu Devrat Badwaj. Kunj Bhatt. Ashley Irene Bolliger. Brianna Nicole Bolliger. <laughs> Sarah Carlin Brando. Isabella Brooker. Natalia Burek. Jensen Ann Silentano. Adnan Ali Chatur. Jessica Chen. Sophia Chen. Ya Chie Chen. Jennifer Cho. Alexandra Kariot. Edison Yi Ching Choi. Jacqueline Chow. Mansi, Mansi Chuk. Danielle Victoria Crafts. Natalie Melanie Chinyansky. Zain Mohammed Dandu. Maya Jasmine De Vries. Anuki Desai. Mustafa Diab. Logan William Dickinson. Lillian Duira. Momen Ahmed El Hendawi. Victoria Epstein. Cassandra Nadia Faber. Eva Fazeli. Jeremy Victor Foyers. Sara Ann Gay Gagnon. Kaya Victoria Gasherovsky. Momchil Galinov Gavrilov. Yaskan Singh Gotra. Jocelyn Gill. Julia Evelyn Glaves. Sara Gliana. Rachel Graham. Shelda Simbi Habiarimana. Leili Hatayegi. Rana Hosni Hamdi. Danielle Pamela Henikam. Adam Mohammed Ismail. Mohammed Ismail. 
Jion Kang. Elizabeth Karam. Matthew Jeremy Karmitz. Malia Noor Khan. Haja Kdir. Mina Hani Makram Kia. Taylor Kilday. Valerie Leco. Elizabeth Marie Cranendonk. Ethan John Krenos. Brianna Lee Kruller. Morgan Kupfer. Bishwa Kumar. Emma Jane Kirinis. Habiba Labidi. Arisa Lalani. Jeannie Lam. Melissa Lamarche Cabral. Christy Yawen Lee. Grace Elizabeth Alversa Lloyd. Caroline Veronica Lovish. Emma Machado. Megan Elise Mamella. Matthew Markle. Kaylin Amanda McKenzie. Katie McLeod. Marisa Sarah McRae. Sohrab Movan. Aya Suleiman Abdelbagi Mohammed. Caitlin Emma Moore. Reagan Taylor Moore. Sarah Kathleen Moore. Randy Naipaul. Jenna Alexandra Nash. Ines Carol Nzana Tsiani. Dominic Nemet. Francis Tung Ng. Luke Chi Hao Nguyen. Abigail Nollet. Eileen Ann O'Boyle. Adriana Rose Odisho. Natalie Nicole Ogrodnik. Natasha Celia Page. Nelani Paramananthan Thararaja. Devanchi Patel. Lucas Frederick Payne. Jocelyn Nancy Penny. Harrison Chow Fan. Olivia Colleen Piltz. Brinda Prabaharan. Michael Georgios Psaltakis. Arya Raha. Saheli Rahman. <laughs> Ali Altaf Rashid. Mansi Ratod. Katril Talia Reed. 
Sara Reyes Olza. Youssef Khaled Saad. Sean Sahota. Savrin Samra. Gabriela Marie Santino. Neha Seroya. Sashin Pal Sayal. Safira Justine Scapatici. Anissa Rose Liliana Schiara. Sukman Kao Sekhon. Shanathan Salia. Nicole Service. Ali Shakawi. Anim Saeed Shawani. Avi Shipley. Mariam Adnan Siddiqui. Mitchell Robert Simpkins. Rishi Shiva Ruban. Jared Paxo. Simra Sohail. Ariane Gail Soriano. Chantal Terra Deming Stad. Mohammed Izan Tahir. Kaveri Tamil Chelvan. Jenny Tran. Graham Russell Treffrey. Mikhail Sirunnikov. Fatima Usman. Emily Christine Van Berkel. Cody James Van der Linde. Marina Veshevich. Samantha Vides. Vanessa Hope Vingo. Julia Volpato. Paige Margot Vrolik. Alicia Marlene Wake. Timothy William Walker. Xu Yu Wang. Freya Homusha Wanya. Stephanie Weeks. Kaylee Ann White. Thomas James Williams. Charlton William Wilson. Jenny Jia Ling Wu. Anthony Yang. Kyle Yao. Jennifer Yi Young. Jolie Elizabeth Young. Evan Yu. Lena Jang. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Science. Tariq Xavier Atkin Jones. Vidi Bhatt. Gail Marie Del Castillo. Ariana Lakshmana Eugenio. Zainab Inam. 
Venetia Kana. Victoria Ann Marchese. Fahid Qureshi. Andrea Cristina Rotario. Mohammed Zain Shoaib. Zain Siddiqui. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Science Kinesiology. Alisa Nicole Di Paolo. Let's give another round of applause for our graduates. I would now like to introduce Ms. Amal Khan, a graduate of the degree Honours Bachelor of Science in the Life Sciences Program, who will be delivering the valedictory address. Good afternoon, Chancellor Smith, President and Vice Chancellor Farrar, Dean McDonald, Provost Tai, Provost Rush, Vice Provost Renelovic, faculty, family, friends, and fellow graduates. My name is Amal Khan, and I'm honored to be this year's Faculty of Science valedictorian. Picture this, it's a summer before first year. After months of deliberation, you finally hit the accept button on OUAC. You're officially a student at McMaster University, ready to conquer the most exciting chapter of your life. As you arrive on campus, you quickly realize this isn't anything like high school. You suddenly have movie theaters as lecture halls, full parking lots at every corner, and just like how our parents say they climbed mountains and swim across oceans to get to school, you had to trek across BSB fields. Okay, it's just a short walk, but you get the point. As time went on, campus didn't seem so big anymore. You got over the daunting challenge of your first chem lab in ABB, conquered Joe Kim's tricky Psych 1 X 3 quizzes, and found your go-to meal at La Piazza. But just when you thought you had it all figured out, everything changed. As the pandemic hit, we had to evolve into a whole new breed of students, adapt to new ways of learning, all while juggling research, sports, and clubs. But through all the Zoom meetings, virtual lectures, and lockdown browser glitches, we somehow found our way through. Shared experiences. Despite there being over 8 billion people on this planet, they've become rarer than ever. Whether it be struggle, hardship, or success, going through something together breeds a bond like no other. It was during the long days stuck at home where we realized the importance of falling back on each other. To find hope where the world can only see darkness is so difficult. But we found it. We found each other. And now, fast forward to 2023. This was our first and last fully in-person year. But guess what? We did it. Let's all take a moment to give ourselves a huge, well-deserved round of applause. As I look out into the sea of faces, I can't help but feel an immense gratitude for the privilege to speak on behalf of such a brilliant cohort of graduates. Each and every one of you sitting here today with your unique experiences and skills have made this class a true representation of excellence. Many of you are the first in your families to attend university. Others come from generations of McMaster graduates. And some of you are immigrants who had to learn a new language, adapt to a new culture, all while carrying the weight of your parents' sacrifices and dreams. 
I would like to give a heartfelt thank you to my parents for raising me to become the person that I am today. Alhamdulillah. The truth, the truth is we are not just graduates. We are future scientists, healthcare professionals, and global interdisciplinary leaders armed with the skill set to fiercely mold the world around us. We are stem cells in a petri dish ready to differentiate into our separate paths. But before you all embark on the next chapter of your lives, if there's one thing you take away from this address, let it be this. Don't let the opinions of others silence your inner voice. You become a what, defined and shaped by societal labels instead of a who, guided by your own decisions and beliefs. Your time on this earth is limited. So be bold, be authentic, and have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Thank you and congratulations to the class of 2023. Thank you, Amal. May I again call upon the Dean of Science, Dr. Maureen McDonald, who will present the Governor General's Academic Medal and the President's Award for Excellence in Student Leadership. The Governor General's Academic Medal is one of the most prestigious awards a student in Canada can receive. Established in 1873, this honor recognizes exceptional academic achievement at the high school, collegiate, undergraduate, and graduate levels. Each year, McMaster awards just two Governor General's silver, silver medals to the students at the university who have achieved the highest academic standing at the undergraduate level. Earning this accolade not only places this year's recipient among the top students to graduate from McMaster, it places them among the top students in all of Canada. On behalf of Her Excellency, the Right Honourable Mary Simon, it gives me great pride to present the Governor General's Academic Silver Medal to Jessica Schneider. Madam Chancellor, I ask that you and all those president, present join me to express recognition of her achievement. Jessica. The President's Award of Excellence in Student Leadership acknowledges the contributions made by students who play a significant role in improving and developing the intellectual, social, and or cultural fabric of the McMaster community. It is my pleasure to present the President's Award of Excellence in Student Leadership to Ariana Soriano. Congratulations, Ariana. I encourage everyone to follow the QR code listed in your program to read about Ariana's outstanding contributions and accomplishments. Congratulations, Jessica and Ariana. I would now like to draw your attention to this screen, which will feature a message from the McMaster Alumni Association. Hello, I'm Kareem Elimam. I graduated from McMaster in 2006 with a Bachelor's of Science. I'm the current president of the McMaster Alumni Association. In 1894, at the end of our university's first convocation, there were 16 McMaster alumni. Today, you join a family of more than 229,000 alumni in 144 countries. All of us have back memories, just like you do. We remember our classes and clubs, our labs and sports. We look back on friends and challenges, on max places, and people, and we know that we share connections with thousands of other Mac grads.
The McMaster Alumni Association's job is to give all of us, including you, pathways to connect and engage with our fellow grads and our alma mater. We can help you grow professionally, learn from fellow alumni, and take care of everything from insurance to real estate to financial services and so much more. Today is about you and your graduation, but when you're ready, your Alumni Association will be here. Until then, congratulations and welcome to the Mac Alumni family. I would now like to invite our President and Vice Chancellor, Dr. David Farrar, back to the podium to deliver his President's Address. Chancellor Smith, distinguished guests, award winners, faculty, members of the McMaster community, members of the McMaster graduating class of 2023, friends and family, it is good to see you here today in person. The pandemic we have just experienced over the last few years has reminded us of how fragile our lives really are and how much we need to be together. Members of the graduating class, one of the real privileges of my role as president is to speak to you on the occasion of your convocation, to offer congratulations on behalf of the university, and to tell you how proud we are of you, how proud I am of you. You have had a university experience like no other class. When you started at McMaster, few people knew what a coronavirus was. Almost no one had used Zoom or Teams for meetings or classes. You may have taken an online course or two, but not an entire semester. And even when you were able to return to the learning environment in person, everything had changed. Now we are back full time. But in the time since you began your program, we have lived through a global pandemic. We have witnessed scientists around the world race to find new, new vaccines. We have watched policymakers make difficult choices about health care. And we've experienced a lifetime of learning in a few short years. We are back, but everything has changed. We are more acutely aware than ever of the possibility of future pandemics. We face the indisputable evidence of climate change and its negative impacts. A war has been raging in Europe for over a year, a catastrophe most of us thought not possible. Disinformation threatens to overwhelm facts and reality, and artificial intelligence appears to be outrunning our systems to manage it. Because the challenges seem so great, we need deliberate strategies to take on these significant challenges and to make a difference. In the last couple of years, I've often thought about the insights from psychologist Daniel Kahneman's book, Thinking Fast and Slow. Kahneman argues that our thinking and decision-making are subject to all kinds of biases, fallacies, and errors when we think fast. We give too much weight to the wrong things, we ignore or discard information that does not support our own point of view. We pay attention to things that happened recently, but ignore events that occurred some time ago. Kahneman invites us to think about thinking, to pay attention to what and how we are thinking so that we can make better decisions. Thinking slow describes what happens when you're at your university. You spend time with people who are considered knowledgeable or experts in their field. You examine data. You consider different perspectives. You look at history. You seek out information from beyond, from beyond your bubble. You make time for conversation and debate to hear different viewpoints, interpretations, or theories, to change your mind or to develop a more complex understanding of diff difficult issues to look for truth in unexpected places. The reality is, every day we use a combination of both types of thinking. We don't have the luxury of thinking slow about every decision and every part of our day, so we choose the big questions where slow, deliberate, analytical thinking is required. During the first few years of the pandemic, we were required to make decisions rapidly. Do we close the university to in-person learning? Do we wear masks when we're in public? Who should get vaccinated? 
At McMaster, we had the benefit of world-class researchers and thinkers who had been working on these kinds of problems for years, and that made our fast decision-making much easier. Undoubtedly, the last few years have given you the opportunity to reflect on what really matters to you and what your next steps will be. Maybe your passion will be global, to address global warming or to find a new source of energy, or maybe it will be about inequity or social justice, or to find ways to make technology work for the public good, or maybe it will be a career in the arts or the sports or culture. But given the pace of change, it might involve a career or a project that none of us have imagined. How do you prepare for that? You look back over your years at McMaster, and I hope you'll see the answer. You prepare by being curious, by being ambitious, ethical, and determined, by challenging assumptions and focusing on facts, by making courageous choices, and sometimes by giving yourself the opportunity to think slow. Whatever your area of study, your McMaster education has equipped you with the tools to solve critical problems and to make a significant positive impact on our community. I am confident you will take the knowledge, experience, and insight from the last few years, and from that, you will create a world worth having. And finally, when you receive your diploma from McMaster, you'll note there's only one name on it, yours but I suspect there are many people in your life who have helped you get to this day of your graduation, family members, friends, teachers, and mentors who have supported you, inspired you, and cheered you on. I hope you'll take some time to thank those people in your life who have helped you get to here. The end of your studies and the granting of your degree may feel as though you are crossing the finish line, but you are actually just beginning, and I wish you the best on your journey. Thank you, Dr. Farrar. May I invite our Chancellor, Ms. Santi Smith, back to the podium to deliver her closing remarks. Yo, Yanale. Congratulations to the class of 2023. Yoyanale in Gaingeha means well done or good job. And I would like everyone to learn how to say it with me. It goes like this. The first sound is yo. Yo. Yan. Yan. Erle. Erle. And together, Yoyanale. <laughs> OK. One, two, three. Yoyanale. Yo like you mean it? One, two, three. Yo, Yanale! Good job. <laughs> As a McMaster alumna, I'm looking forward to seeing where you all go from here. And I wanted to say I'm very happy to be here during the degree of Dr. Moyes' honorary degree because he was my anatomy teacher for two years, so congratulations. Amal, Jessica, Ariana, and Dr. Moyes, congratulations on your achievements and for sharing your work and your words and your journey with us to inspire us. As Karim eloquently said in the video, you are now all graduates and members of the McMaster alumni family. Woo! Dr. Farrar, you've given us a lot to think about. I know I will personally remember your words of wisdom. And graduates, take those words with you and all the words you heard today with you as you go. Best wishes to you all in the next part of your journey. Now in closing, I have a few final announcements. A reception will be held in, for the graduates and their guests in the Wentworth Room B and C in the Convention Center immediately following the ceremony. Finally, I would like to ask you please remain standing at your seats until the academic procession and the graduates have left the hall. Now, please join in the singing of the national anthem and after the singing of the anthem, this convocation stands adjourned. Yeah.
Thank you.